Good evening, everyone. I'm just uh, recording this tonight just to do the show and tell. So this is the Kronos 88 key first generation model that was re initially released in 2011. I'll just open it up. Um, now, as you can see, I've obviously upgraded the SSD to a 500 gig Samsung 850 Evo. Um, that's the power supply. I've already done the SATA swaps, even though I only got one drive, but it still works. Um, now, I've got two RAM sticks here. One's a bit different, but it doesn't work at this stage because uh, the main board doesn't recognize this particular stick of RAM. The bigger one here is one is two gigs. This is also two gigs, but it only reads these two gigs because it's uh, it was factory installed. Um, now, as you can see, I've got the Ethernet. A flat Ethernet wire, so stuck there already. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is I'll just hook this up like a normal machine because this is really a, a main a standard PC mainboard. This is a heatsink without a fan, so obviously it's a low powered CPU. Um, it doesn't have the ATX 12 volt pins. Now I've got the VGA connected here to a HDMI converter, um, just here. And that's onto my TV. And the reason I've got that is because I just want to see what color actually comes up on the screen while the Kronos is booting. And what I'm going to do later on is uh, flash a new newer BIOS to this mainboard and see if it'll eventually recognize the second RAM stick. So what we'll do now is we'll turn this thing on. Now there's no sound plugged in even though there's speaker stuff, but uh, obviously this the main board speakers was never plugged in, it uses a different cabling to route through the rest of the circuitry, which is proprietary to Korg. As you can see here, it's booting up. And for those that don't know, yes, it is a Linux-based um, operating system. So while the Kronos is booting, it's got its own screen on the actual keyboard itself. But while the operating system boots, this will obviously send some signals to the hardware via serial to tell to tell the rest of the circuitry that um, the operating system's up and running. Interestingly enough, see as you can see here, very familiar setup, and it says please press enter to activate this console. Let's do that because I've got my keyboard here, a standard PS2 keyboard. Now, at the moment, at this time, the Kronos is actually still loading. But um, what we can do while that's happening is we can actually browse through the file system like any Linux machine. Now, of course, this is, it does use a custom Linux kernel. So, uh, do you name A? Oh, oh hang on. So, you name dash A? Oh, crap. And that's also the other thing. So, what's interesting as well is uh, some of the key codes don't actually work on this particular version. So if I go shift two, for example, I get quotes instead. If I do double quotes, it does that instead. So obviously the key mapping is out of whack. Um, I did install um, Kronos Hacker's uh, SSH drop bear um, hack, root, routing hack. Um, so I could theoretically access this um, through um, through uh, drop there via the network using PuTTY or some other SSH clients, but and of course the key mapping has worked correctly in that in that screen. But uh, yeah, this is the first time I've seen this running behind the scenes. Now at this point in time, now you heard the beep before. I think that's because the Kronos has actually started. I'm pressing some keys, nothing happens. That's because the sound's not routed here, but it's routed through another cable which goes through the rest of the circuitry, and there's a headphone jack one of these ends, which I haven't plugged in. So, um, yeah, um, this is just for the show and tell. Thanks for watching.